Amen, church. Amen. You, can you hear me? Amen. All right, can you see me? Yes. All right, for those on Zoom, if you can hear and you can see me, then you understand that I am not Elder Cynthia Saunders Perry. We have, unfortunately, to say that uh, Elder Perry is not feeling well this morning, so we're going to pray for her swift recovery. Also, uh, for um, housekeeping, your bulletin might indicate that this is the third Sunday of Easter, April the 7th. It is actually April the 14th. All right. That being said, all of those who are able, please stand for our call to worship. Yesterday, we ignored your call, O Lord, because our voices were all we heard. Today, O God, we quiet ourselves to hear your voice and answer your call to share your vision of the world. Yesterday, we cried because we thought we were alone. Today, we rejoice because we know now that you never left our side. Yesterday, we couldn't imagine today because we felt no hope for tomorrow. Today, we know that yesterday is gone, but that tomorrow is filled with possibilities beyond our dreams. If we but act today according to your call. Yesterday, we were dead. Today, precious Lord, we walk with new life because you have called us to get up and to be doers of the word and not hearers only. Today, we say yes to your will and to your way. Hallelujah, Ashe, and amen. And amen. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning, so glad I'm here in Jesus' name. Amen. So glad I'm here, so glad I'm here in Jesus' name, so glad I'm here in Jesus' name, I don't know, I don't know what you come to do, I don't know, I don't know what you come to do, I come to praise his name. I come to praise his name. Sing while I'm here. Sing while I'm here in Jesus. 
Jesus' name. I sing while I'm here in Jesus' name. I don't know. I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. I come to praise his name. I come to praise his name. Pray while I'm here. Pray while I'm here in Jesus' name. Oh, pray while I'm here in Jesus' name. I don't know. I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. I come to praise his name. I come. I come to praise his name. Shout while I'm here. Oh, shout while I'm here in Jesus' name. Shout while I'm here in Jesus' name. I don't know. I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. I come to praise his name. I come, oh, I come to praise his name. Let the church say amen. Amen. Please be seated. Amen, church again. I don't know what you come to do. But now I've come to say the morning prayer. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, our Father. You have been our comfort by day and our song in the night. So, as we enter this worship service, may we enter with humble and grateful hearts. Meet us here, O oh God, and renew a spirit within us. Through your Holy Spirit, heal us and send us out onto the world. So be living examples of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. May we be active Christians, guided by a faith that lives in our deeds as well as in our hearts and on our lips. May our encounter with you, O oh Lord, leave us better followers than when we entered this holy space. These things and more we ask in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and give us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and thine power, glory, forever. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. There you'll find joy, you'll find peace, you'll find happiness and a rich reward. I was glad. What did we just sing? I don't know what you've come to do. Amen. But I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It's really good to be here one more time. Amen. 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 And as we gather this morning to worship and praise God and to give God thanks and praise because we really can't thank God enough for guarding us from things we don't even know are threatening us. By the time we go to bed at night, we don't know what God has thwarted to get in our way, but God has always been there to shield us and protect us because God loves us. But we've also been offered this wonderful opportunity, brothers and sisters, to come before the throne of grace to ask God for forgiveness. So before we read our corporate prayer of confession, let us go to our own quiet chambers, those secret chambers, and ask God for forgiveness, those sins we dare not utter loud as we hear our core response played underneath.
Together, let us read our corporate prayer of confession. God of grace and God of glory, our prayer this day is like those of past days, asking that you have mercy on us for those sins we commit upon ourselves, our neighbors, and that refuse to let go of us in our weakest moments. You have told us that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. When we give in to this weakness, have mercy on us, O Lord. We cry out for a mercy grace we know is not earned, but still we cry out, O Lord, have mercy. We fall prey to the beguiling sound of our own voices and the hypnotic allure of our own thoughts. Have mercy on us in these moments of weakness. Search our hearts, point us in the direction you must go, you must go in order that we be made anew. These and more we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Beloved, in this prayer, we are asking God to forgive us as, as a church for not doing all that we can as a church. But we are also understanding that we are asking God to forgive us of those things we dare not even say aloud. God sent us his son so that we might have life, so that we might not be afraid of tomorrow. God sent us his son who rose on the third day to conquer death and fear. So in the name of our risen savior, I now proclaim that our sins are forgiven. Let the church say amen. amen. Oh Lord, have mercy oh lord have mercy oh lord have mercy have mercy on me. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Good morning once again, church. Good morning, Good morning to all of those who are worshiping with us on Zoom. We know you had a lot of choices this morning, just looking outside to see what the weather looks like. But you chose to worship with us this morning. For that, we are grateful. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Church, bear with me one moment while I go through some of these announcements that they have listed here for us. For those who have the bulletin at hand, you can follow with me. For those who don't, you can listen to me. Uh, with our 86th anniversary, keep that in mind, it's 86, just around the corner, we hope that you have set aside the date of May the 5th as a day of celebration with your Church of the Master family. Our guest preacher will be Reverend Ian Straker, who's no stranger to Church of the Master. It had been previously stated that there might be a potluck supper. The committee has informed us that there will be no potluck dinner. Does that mean there'll be no dinner? <laughs> All right. But that, ref okay, that refreshments will be provided by the committee. Okay, so refreshments is the operative word. We'll leave it at that. We encourage you to invite your friends to join us so that we can fill this sanctuary with songs of praise, shouts of victory, and words of thanksgiving to the Lord for having brought us this far. Okay, that's May the 5th. Uh, also... I've got an added announcement from uh, Elder Grayman. The uh, vocal workshop, which is uh, which usually occurs once a month, this time is going to be on May the 11th at 12 noon. And any questions with regard to that can be referred to um, Elder Grayman. He'll be glad to assist you, I'm sure, in any questions you might have. Uh, the Church of the Master Federal Credit Union is celebrating 80 years of service to this church and the community. Amen to that. Here are some upcoming dates celebrating this landmark milestone. Now, April the 20th, uh, the event is Future Millionaires Financial Literacy Event. Okay, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And there's a flyer 
that's in the bulletin and also available in the front on the uh, desk. May the 6th, Ecumenical Fellowship with Faith-Based Credit Unions. That's 9 to 12 noon. May the 19th is the 80th Annual Business Meeting and Celebration, immediately following the worship here at Church of the Master. So the credit union hopes that uh, you continue to support its efforts by attending one or all of these functions. Uh, Church of the Master Presbyterian Women, they continue to meet the third Tuesday of each month from 1 to 2.30 p.m. The next meeting will be Tuesday, April the 16th. All Church of the Master Presbyterian Women and all others who would like to join them are invited. The conference call information number is 978-990-5033. And the access code is 118261. For more information, please reach out to Elder Joyce Seabrooks. Now, for those worshiping with us on Zoom or YouTube, please leave us your contact information so that we can reach out to you. Our church contact information can be found on the back of the bulletin. If you're interested in becoming a member of Church of the Master, please contact us and someone will reach out to you. You can also reach out to uh, Reverend Palmore. We look forward to hearing from you. Church of the Master, also we want to keep all those who are on our sick and shut-in list in our prayers. We have uh, Mr. Irwin Brassier, we have, of course, Elder Connie Bunn, Francis Cutler, Dr. Arlene Hector, Sandy Mickle, Rachel Thomas, Deacon Ann Rainier, Joseph Trayford, and Karen Whitney, and Yolanda Wingate, and there I'm sure are others, and for all of those who are on our sick and shut-in, List and if you're not even listed, please understand that our prayers and thoughts go out to you. Amen. And also, church, we're a church that is not singularly minded and we're not a uh, closed thinking. We also want to keep in mind those of us who are suffering in areas that are not even near to us. There's a lot going on in this world, and we want to make sure that we, as a church family, keep everyone who is going through, as they say, in our prayers with the hope for a um positive outcome. I'm sure the Reverend will speak more to that as to what we can do as a church community to effect that. Uh, I don't have any more announcements. Reverend Palmer, do you have anything else you want to say? Again, good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's so good to see all of you here this morning. Um, Elder Rory Scott has asked me to remind those of you that are here, there will be a brief rehearsal of the Mass Choir after service today. And I received a call from Elder Mary Riley, she just asked that we keep her in our prayers as she is going through some health issues right now. As um, Trustee Reynolds has pointed out, some things we know about, and there's a lot that we will never know. But as he said, somebody is always going through it. Always. So let us continue to pray for each other, pray for our church, pray for the world. The world is facing some mighty battles. And so let us be mindful that if God can take care of, if God can create the world, God can take care of the world and God can heal the world. So let us pray for that healing so that we will have a world to live in. Amen. Amen. And now I think that's it. That's it. Tithes and offering. We're going to move on to our... Uh stewardship affirmation as the trustees come forward. Keep in mind that with tithes and offerings, there are any number of ways whereby you can give. The first option, of course, is that you can give online. You can give by using your cell phone. That information is indicated in the bulletin as well. You can give, um, well, through the mail. Just make sure you take your uh, giving to the post office. And you can also give in person, which we will have the opportunity to do right now. And will you please join me in reading our stewardship affirmation. We believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died for the sins of all humankind. We believe that the act of giving is an act of sharing in the ministry of God through the Lord Jesus Christ. And we believe that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, said the Lord of hosts. We believe that it is our duty as Christians to strive to do the greatest rather than the least for the cause of Jesus Christ. Amen, church. Oh,
give thanks unto the Lord, oh God is good, yes God is good. Oh give thanks, oh give thanks unto the Lord, and God is good, yes God is good. For he is, yes he is, for God is good, yes he is, for he is. Worthy, for oh, God is good. Yes, God is. Good. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For oh, God is good. Yes, God is good. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For oh, God is good. Yes, He is. For oh, He is. Yes, he is worthy. Yes, God is good. Yes, God is good. For he is worthy. Yes, God is good. Yes, God is good. All who are able, please stand. Pray. God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures in Thanks unto the Lord, for God is good. Yes, God is so good. Lord, we thank you for this day, one we hadn't seen before, and one we shall never see again. So we give you thanks and praise and lift up this offering, asking that you use it according to your will. We give thanks for those who gave this morning here in the sanctuary. We give thanks for those who are giving online. And we give, you, we give thanks for those who wanted to give today, Lord, but they could not but they have offered their lives to you, and that is the greatest gift that we can offer you. So lift up all of these gifts that we offer and present to you, and use them according to your will. Let the world know that you are still God, and you are still in control. These things we pray in the master's name of Jesus, our Savior. And to the church say amen. 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 And amen. And amen. Church, at this time, we'll have our scripture reading. Our reading is taken from the Old Testament, Psalms chapter 37. I'll be reading verses 1 through 7 and also 27 and 28. Do not fret because of the wicked. Do not be envious of wrongdoers, for they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, so you will live in the land and enjoy security. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. 
Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act. He will make your vindication shine like the light and the justice of your cause like the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret over those who prosper in their way, over those who carry out evil devices. Depart from evil and do good, so you shall abide forever. For the Lord loved justice. He will not forsake his faithful ones. Thank you for the reading of the word. The gospel lesson will be read by Reverend Palmore, taken from the book of Luke, chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Hear now these words. <clears throat> Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you shall live. But wanting to justify himself, the lawyer asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? And Jesus replied, a man had go was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling near, while traveling came near him. And when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper and said, take care of him. And when I come back, I will repay you whatever you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Morning, church. Morning, morning. I was bragging on you guys this week, Amen. telling people how wonderful and how well you pray and about your connection to God that nobody else has. And a friend of mine called me because her mother's not doing well. So I'm asking everybody to pray for her and her mom. And uh, she would really appreciate it. And I know it will work. I already know. So thank you. Amazing grace will always be my song of praise for it was grace that bought my liberty I'll never know just why he came to love me so he looked beyond my faults and saw my needs i shall forever lift mine eyes 
to Calvary to view the cross where Jesus died for me. How marvelous thy grace that bought my falling soul. He looked beyond my faults and saw my knees. I shall forever lift mine eyes to Calvary to view the cross where Jesus died for My falling soul, he looked beyond my faults. He looked beyond my faults. He looked beyond my faults. And so my, my Let the church say amen. amen. I am so glad that Wayne sings for us. <laughs> amen. I remember the first time I met Dwayne, um, I think it was about 1984. Um, yeah, we were five years old then. <laughs> Voices like grown men at five years old. <laughs> And we were at the Riverside Church. I was singing and the assistant conductor of the Riverside Inspirational Choir. And we were preparing our concert. And Joanne Joubert had asked Dwayne to come in and sing one of the solos. And that was the first time I met him because I, I was also asked to sing a solo at the same time. So ever since then, I found out he knew and grew up with one of my closest friends. And ever since then, he has always blessed me. And once, Every time I hear him sing, I think that God is trying to send us a message. That God says, I can use you no matter what. And we want to thank God for Dwayne. We want to thank God for Idris also. Amen. Um, what he brings to the table with his, with his own background in jazz elevates us in ways we hadn't thought before. So we are grateful. Would you please pray with me? Dear God, we come at this moment to this preaching moment asking that you look beyond our faults and see and provide what we need. I ask that you open all hearts and minds to receive your word today. Most of all, Lord, I'm asking that you grant me an extra measure of your grace and mercy, for without you, I can't do this. So Lord, I ask that you reduce me so that you might be increased. Reduce me so that your favor might bless all. Let it be your voice that is heard. Let it be your spirit that moves us and let it be your power that sends us forth. So let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. amen.
When I first started teaching when I was five years old, um, oh, that just went over at much. <laughs> when I first started teaching, um, I was teaching at an adult training school in Atlanta. And I was teaching reading, but I was also the testing specialist, preparing um, our students for jobs as clerk typists, as secretaries, as bank tellers. And I was preparing them for interviews and I wanted them to try to think outside of the box about themselves. And so I would ask them certain questions. I would ask them, if you could be a store, what kind of store would you be? If you could be an animal, what animal would you choose to be? If you could be a geometric shape, what shape would you choose to be? And then one, an hourglass, okay. <laughs> and, but then there was one question that I really liked because it was dear to my heart as a musician. I said, if you could be a musical instrument, what instrument would you choose to be? And I got so many interesting answers. The most frequent answer was, yes, Sister Lord, piano. Because that's the instrument most of us grow up hearing all the time. But a lot of the fellas, they chose bass guitar or drum. A lot of the women chose harps and flutes. And so it got them to think about, how do I want the world to see me? How does a piano represent itself in the world? And we have before us today, in the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi, one of the most famous prayers in all of Christendom. And it opens up with, Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, divine master, grant that I may not seek to be consoled as to console to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love for. It is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. What is an instrument of peace, brothers and sisters? What is an instrument of peace or an agent of grace? Well, I view it as this, an instrument of peace is not so much a what, but as Christians, an instrument of peace is more a who we are as defined by what we do. If the saying action speaks louder than words is true, then nothing identifies who we are as Christians more than how we live and act in the world. What do we sing all the time? Lord, I want to be a Christian. I want to be like Jesus. I want to be more holy. Who we are as Christians is defined by what we do. And as we move through this Easter season, we must always strive, as we just said, strive to do the greatest rather than the least for the cause of Jesus Christ. We must be intentional in all we do, grounding everything we do in mercy and compassion. Being an instrument of peace or an agent of grace means being the Good Samaritan. Now, the parable of the Good Samaritan is a familiar story. It's one of the earliest ones that we learn in Bible school. The Good Samaritan illustrates how the opportunity to be an instrument of God's peace or an agent for God's grace is always before us. There's never a moment when we don't get the opportunity to be an instrument of peace. The parable, in the parable, we find a story that challenges us on what it means to be a Christian today, especially in the partisan worlds of politics, and religion. This parable confronts us with this question, how much like Jesus do you really want to be? 
How much like Jesus do you really want to be? A lawyer asked Jesus what he must do to gain eternal life. The scripture says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus asked him, what does the law say? And the lawyer replies, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus says, you are correct. Do these things and you will live. But the lawyer, to justify himself, takes this one step further and asks Jesus, well, who's my neighbor? But in asking this question, the lawyer opens the door to Jesus. He opens the door for Jesus to expand the conversation about salvation to include the golden rule. Jesus offers nations and governments and institutions and individuals the opportunity to restore wholeness where there is brokenness, especially when it requires us to embrace and help those who are not like us or those whose culture we've been taught to revile and hate. Jesus understands that when the lawyer asks the question, but who is my neighbor? The lawyer is not only trying to justify himself, he is also trying to rig the jury pool. He asks the question hoping that Jesus will indicate a neighbor is someone like him. Is my neighbor someone who looks like me, talks like me, walks like me, or even loves like me? And Jesus really is saying, no, the neighbor is not those things. In this parable, Jesus dismantles and deconstructs old notions of community that were built by power and privilege and exclusion in order to, to change our perspective. He, he deconstructs them in order to, to build a new and expansive community a community that is expansive and with bonds of acceptance and affirmation for all people. In this parable, Jesus asks who we are in the story. Are we like the priest? How many people asking for money do we walk past every day? Are we like the Levite? How many people... How many eyes do we avoid so that we can walk past them every day? Or are we the Samaritan? Jesus asked, are we the one that's left dead on the road, hoping that someone stops by to help us? Jesus took the question, who is my neighbor, and turned it around to really ask, what would a real neighbor do? So to be an instrument of peace or an agent for God's grace in the shadow of the cross and with the evidence of the empty tomb, we ask, what does this mean? Truth be told, if you look around the world today, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of peace seeking going on. Every day we hear something new coming out of Gaza. Every day we hear something new coming out of the Ukraine. Every day we hear something new in this country. Israel's prime minister and the war dogs of Israel continue to pursue a genocidal agenda when it comes to Gaza and her citizens. Over 33,000 people have been killed and most of them men, women, and children. Hamas continues its pursuit and its ongoing war with Israel, with the backing of Syria and Iran and other Middle Eastern nations. Vladimir Putin is hell-bent on annexing Ukraine, saying that Ukraine is already Russian, that it's not an independent country. He is hell-bent on annexing Ukraine through war and destruction, no matter how many lives it costs. All across the globe, all around the world, it seems that 
where war breaks out, winning is the only objective. No matter the cost, no matter the consequences. I remember hearing an interview with when they were comparing Gaza and, and Ukraine. And one senator was really coming down on Putin saying it is wrong that he is killing Ukrainians and that the United States must send aid to the Ukrainians and weapons to the Ukrainians to fight back against Vladimir Putin. Then they asked that same senator, well, what about Gaza and Israel? And he had the nerve to say, well, there are always casualties in war. He did not say that we should support Gaza or that we should be caring. He said that, well, people die in war. That's, that's what happens. All across the globe, it seems that where war breaks out, winning is the only objective, no matter the cost or the consequences. Believing the insane notion that war is an instrument of peace. To some tyrants, waging war is even a theology. Waging war is a religion. How many of you remember the movie Apocalypse Now? Almost. You remember it? Oh, okay. Marlon Brando was in it, but there was one scene, it was a, a, a movie about the Vietnam War, and one of the scenes has one of the main characters getting up in the morning, he says, I love the smell of napalm in the morning. Napalm is a weapon. This, yeah, this soldier worshiped at the foot or in the theology of war. The Reverend Dr. Jeremiah Wright, however, explains the insanity of this delusionary theology ring about war and peace when he says, waging war to make peace is like having sex to keep from getting pregnant. Think about that, y'all. <laughs> waging war to make peace is like having sex to keep from getting pregnant. None of them make sense. Here in America, our political system is so divided that justice and governing no longer seem relevant or required of the people we elect to office. There seems to be this win at all cost attitude and approach to governing because hate has become the intoxicating air that too many of our politicians breathe. Nothing is done except through measures that ensure that power stays in the right hands. Some of our leaders drink the elixir of grandeur, abandoning the notion that they can be a force for good for all people. Marjorie Taylor Greene would love to say that she's fighting for the people of America. Very few things she says make sense. Nobody wants to be a good Samaritan anymore. Nobody wants to be a good Samaritan wanting or helping those whom they ordinarily would help, or those they wouldn't help because of political differences, because of cultural differences, because of religious differences. Neither Israel nor Russia want to be a good Samaritan nation, and neither the Republicans or the Democrats seem to want to be good Samaritan political parties. No one wants to be good and decent and humane in the way that Jesus asked us to be. No one wants to be an instrument of peace that can stem the tide of impending destruction. No one wants to be an agent of grace whose presence can offer healing. So again, what does it mean to be an instrument of peace in the living of these days. If, if our risen savior is our example, and Jesus should always stand before us 
as the example we follow. If our risen Savior is our example, then it means that being an instrument of peace means that you're going to endure the suffering of the crosses in our lives. We'll endure them just so that we can denounce war and violence as a means to an end. It means being less selfish and more selfless in order to rob our crosses of their poison and their power. And yes, countries have crosses to bear, crosses made up the, of the toxic notions of superiority and dominance. Political parties have crosses to bear, crosses made of toxic notions of white supremacy and privilege in one party and the toxic notions of victimhood in another party. No one is innocent. No one. Sometimes it's like being between a rock and a hard place. Is it the blue pill or the red pill? And yes, we as individuals all have crosses that we bear. Crosses that devalue our humanity, but the crosses that trick us in lifting our, our vanity to levels of delusional grandeur. So what does it mean for nations, political parties, governing systems, and individuals? What does it mean to become an instrument used by God? It means putting faith into action and not putting our egos in overdrive. It means putting faith into action by acting. Sometimes we have faith, but we don't act on faith. We'd rather just talk faith, because it's a whole lot easier to talk faith, a whole lot easier. It means putting faith into action by acting on that faith, understanding this possibility that those you help may never appreciate what you do for them. Being an instrument of God's peace means that you will be hurt and disappointed by those you love and trust. Those you have sworn to serve and protect. You will be hurt by those whose interests you have put before your very own in order that a real peace be achieved. Sometimes being an instrument of peace means that you will do things that don't guarantee or promise that you'll receive something in return. Being an instrument of peace means sometimes disturbing the waters of a false peace, of a false security, so that the still waters of true peace will flow. Beloved, when you began, it was just like, it was a week ago, Last, let's see, last Sunday was the first. No, Monday was the first, right? First, second, third, fourth. On last Thursday, I think it was, April 4th, Dr. King was killed 56 years ago. What did he try to do? Dismantle the false peace that this nation has been built upon so that real peace and real justice might become the way of the land. Beloved, Dr. King knew that when you just began to dismantle the faulty foundations upon which a fraudulent peace is built, when you began to expose as lies the false narratives that have been passed along as sacred truths, when, when you began to deconstruct systems that for millennia have relied on fear and intimidation to maintain the validity, when you began to dismantle all of these with the evidence of an empty tomb, you begin to walk differently. You begin to talk differently. You begin to walk with the power of resurrection power. Today, we are faced with enormous political and moral implications. We can either give in to the worst parts of ourselves that is building walls to separate us, building real and spiritual walls to exclude any 
and all those we don't like. Or we can expand our vision and begin to see that building walls of any type is not the path to peace. Or that buying more guns under the notion, under the notion of ensuring safety is a path to sure death. Or believing that winning at all costs means the same as victory. The Good Samaritan shows us that when someone is rejected or dismissed as being irrelevant, I'm sure many of us sitting here and many of you online have been dismissed as being not important in somebody's life. Being dismissed, saying that you don't count. The Good Samaritan shows us that when someone is rejected or dismissed as being irrelevant, when evil and hatred dominate the conversation about peace, then peace doesn't have a chance. And grace cannot abound. We have choices. We can either be like the priest, we can be like the Levite, or we can be like the Samaritan. Which do you choose in a world like today? If we choose to be like the priest or the Levite who believed that their actions were righteous according to the laws of their faith, we have to live with those consequences. Or we can choose to be like the Samaritan. Beloved, we can be the Samaritan. Those We can choose to be an instrument of peace and heal this broken nation. We can be like the Samaritan who chose to be an instrument of peace by choosing to heal this broken man left for dead. We can be the Good Samaritan who chose to be an agent of grace by choosing to help someone out of the goodness of his heart who needed his help as much as he needed our prayers. How many of you over the course of your life heard somebody tell another person, I'm going to pray for you? And that's all they do. Every time there's a mass shooting, politicians get on TV and say what? We gotta pray for these families. But they will not do anything to take the guns off the street. We all thought it might happen with Newton when 20 children, six years old and under were killed. What did that do? The NRA just strengthened their resolve to put more guns in the streets. We can be the Samaritan and act out of a real and honest love for humanity, understanding that real love is not a magic that simply disappears, but real love is the ongoing work of hearts bent on doing the will of God. And God's will is that we allow ourselves to be used by him, to be used by her, to be peacemakers and grace givers when we offer ourselves to be available to God, to be used by God, we will be less flippant when using this go-to Christian trope. There but for the grace of God go I. We will be less flippant when we use that phrase and instead say, because of God's grace, here I am. Let me say that again. If we really want to be instruments of peace, we won't look at somebody on hard times and say, there but for God's grace go I, almost implying that God's grace is absent from that person. But instead, if we want to be real instruments used by God, we will say, because of God's grace, I am here to help the one who needs help. The story began with a question about how to receive eternal life, how to be saved, how to get salvation, to receive salvation. Then Jesus showed us that salvation came to the Samaritan that day because he chose to do the greater good rather than claiming to be an example of the greater good. In the end, Jesus asked the lawyer, which of these three was the true neighbor to the one who fell among thieves. And the lawyer said, the one who showed mercy. 
And Jesus said, go and do likewise. He didn't say go and pretend. He didn't say go and, and, and pray for somebody. He said, go and do likewise. Beloved, let us strive to be a good Samaritan nation. A good, let us strive to be a good Samaritan church. A good Samaritan people. By letting our actions speak louder than our words. And if the question comes up, what would Jesus do? Then use St. Francis' poem to frame your answer. It says, Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there's hatred, let me sow love. But we do like Jesus. Jesus would bring love to the table instead of hate. Says where there is injury, pardon. Well, Jesus would offer forgiveness rather than seek revenge. He also says, what else would the, the prayer say? The prayer says, where there is doubt, faith. Well, Jesus would bring faith to banish the uncertainty of doubt. Where there is despair, hope. Jesus would cast hope into the den of despair. It says where there is darkness light Jesus would cast the light upon the would cast light his light upon the shadow of darkness and bestow and bestow joy, joy to the world he would console those who need consolation and understand those who are rarely understood finally he would love those whom love has been withheld knowing that to love is the greatest gift of all, and that in its giving, we receive God's blessing and God's salvation. So to close this sermon, I ask you to look at your bulletins and go to the poem, The Prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. I think it's on the next to last page. Say amen when you find it. Amen. amen. Let us recite that poem together. Together. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen. amen. And may God add a blessing to this word so that we might transform, be transformed to be a good Samaritan church, peopled by good Samaritan people. Amen. amen. And now we open the doors of the church, inviting anyone who is seeking to be a part of this Good Samaritan body, who is seeking to, to be a part of a church that seeks to be a good church by doing, the doors of the church are now open for those individuals. As we hear our hymn of invitation, I need thee every hour.
I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to Thee. I need Thee, oh, I need Thee. Every hour I need Thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come, I come, oh, oh, oh. bless me now. My Savior, I come to Thee. Oh, Lord, we come knowing that we need You right now. We ask that You come and mend broken hearts. We ask that You come and heal a broken nation. We ask that You come and heal a broken world. Touch our hearts so that we might see that those in need are not our enemies. That those who don't walk like us are not crippled. Those who don't talk like us aren't illiterate. And those who don't love like us are immoral. Help us to not see the worst in people, but to see the best and the opportunity for people. We thank you for this church and it's 86 years of service, opening its doors, doing its best to be a good Samaritan church. Gracious God, we ask that you continue to bless us. There might be someone here or online within the sound of my voice who just wants to know that you are there. So Lord, touch them in the way that they know it's you. It might be through a song, it might be through a prayer, it might be by you sending a person just to check on them. But Lord, let them know that they are not alone. This is our prayer. Our prayer for ourselves. Our prayers for each other. And our prayers for the world. We pray it in the matchless name of Jesus, who is our Lord, who is our Savior, who is our brother and our friend. So in the name of the Father, we pray. In the name of of the Son, we pray in the name of the Holy Ghost, we pray. One God and Mother of us all. Let the church say amen. amen. For our closing hymn, I thought I'd bring something new to us. Some of you might know it. Get right, church, and let's go home. How many of you have heard that before? Come on. All who are able, stand up. Get by right church. Oh, forget by right church and let's go home. Get right church and let's go home. Get right, church. Get right, church. Get right, church. And let's go home. One more time. Get right, church. Get right, church. And let's go home. Get right, church. And let's go home. Get right, church. Get right, church. Get right, church. Get right, church, and let's go home.
I'm going home on the morning train. I'm going home on the morning train. I'm going home. I'm going home on the morning train. I'm going home. I'm going home. I'm going home. I'm going home. I'm going home on the morning train. Evening train might be too late. Evening train might be too late. Oh, evening train might be too late. Evening train. Evening evening train. Evening train. Evening train. Train, evening train, evening train, might be too late. Got my ticket in my hand. I got my ticket in my hand. Got my ticket. I got my ticket in my hand. Got my ticket. Oh, I got my ticket. Got my ticket. Got my ticket. I got my ticket in my hand. If you don't go, don't hinder me. If you don't go, don't hinder me. If you don't go, if you don't go, don't hinder me. If you don't go, if you don't go, if you don't go, if you don't go, don't hinder me. Get right church. Oh, get right church and let's go home. Get right church and let's go home. Get right church. Get right church. Get right church. Get right church and let's go home. Please repeat after me. I must live with myself. I must live with myself. And so, and so I want to be fit. I want to be fit for myself to know. For myself to know. I don't want to come to the setting sun. I don't want to come to the setting sun. Hating myself. Hating myself. For the things I've done. For the things I've done. Brothers and sisters, Brothers what would God have us to do? God would have us to take somebody's hand. God would have us to be instruments of peace by doing peace. God would have us to be agents of grace by showing grace and mercy. So it says, may your struggles, may your struggles keep you near the cross. May your troubles show that you need God. May your battles in the way they should. And may your bad days prove that God is good, and may your whole life prove that God is good. Take somebody's hand, give them a holy hug, a holy handshake, and tell them, I love you, and I'm there for you. <laughs>